opening set, the dome, I'll call it the dome, I forgot what its sort of title was now, but that was constantly revamped, wasn't it, uh, for various um, other um, things. I know we often had a lot of trouble with the wretched chair that, came, that wouldn't come up or go down or work as it should, and Jack was always sort of thrashing around trying to, <laughs> trying to get that to go properly. Um, as you say, it was probably a very big set, wasn't it? Quite an elaborate set for a television series, the main dome. All, all film sets have walls and they all float. In other words, they can be taken out to get another camera set up or, uh, well, it's, it's, it's usually that, it's just to get a different set up and then put back in again or doing reverse shots or, or sometimes you get lighting and even. Um, and then most of the stuff then was, was lit from the top and the floor as opposed now I think very little stuff is lit, lit from the a rail putting a, a, you know going around the top of the set. Um, that's why I tended not to have ceilings ever and there wasn't a ceiling on this set. It was such a large set I think but as I remember it the whole unit simply moved into the set proper and shot as as required you know. Almost as soon as one got down there for makeup on the first day assistant assistant would come rushing along and say, now come along Mr. O, we want you on the set. Uh, we're not shooting at the moment, but we want you to see the set because it is something quite extraordinary. Uh, there's been nothing quite like this before and we'd like you to have a good look at it and we'll point out all the different features and you're going to be working in this area and so we want you to accustom yourself uh, to the scene. And so therefore, one was taken straight onto the set, saw this remarkable apparition, and thought, well, it's a nice large open space, one should be able to deliver something in this area. Obviously, uh, with a set that was uh, as complicated as that and with so, so much going on, it, it was imperative that you stayed within the area designated for your scene. Uh, all right, so you may have to walk from point A to point B before speaking to camera, which was maybe over there, but you were talking to somebody there. Uh, so, rather like in the old days of uh, live television, one did have marks, and you moved onto that spot, because if you didn't, the camera was shooting over your shoulder, or whatever, you had to be on that spot. In other words, you played from that designated portion of the set. But that was all entirely up to the director. Finally, Derek A. Wood recalls the cumbersome seesaw that dominated the centre of the set. It was fascinating to see this great thing going round. And uh, certainly, although I myself was not uh, involved uh, in any, anything actually sitting on it. Um, I had no lines to say from it. And uh, so when there was a break or one did the usual little boy thing and said, oh, I'd love to have a go on that. And uh, so one had a go on it. And great fun it was too. It wasn't all that fast. 